What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Wealth Not Weight podcast. I am your host, as always, Joseph Kouisa, and today's episode, we're doing something very different. So I started to record um, the podcast, and originally, it was just going to be me kind of monologuing and talking, but I was very upset. I wouldn't even, maybe not even upset, but I was very just displeased on how it came out originally. So what I started to do was I, I got part of the way through it. Um, and it just kind of seemed like a Wealth Not Weight episode. It didn't even really seem like a podcast. It, I had this great idea, and I was talking about it, and I just got so kind of disheartened by the episode, I ended up just stopping it. I was going to, you know, I was debating on what I could do with it, how I could set it up, but I decided to use this as a great opportunity, especially on the podcast, in a sort of monologuing format, um, to describe things aren't always going to come out great the first time they're formed. And this is a perfect example of that. Um, Even somebody who's been doing this for quite a while, um, I've had, you know, several podcast episodes, both with this and other things underneath my belt. So just showing you that things don't always go the way you plan, but turning that issue into an opportunity is going to help you greatly in life. So I'm going to play part of the clips. I'm going to kind of do like a director's commentary and inject and talk about what I don't like, what can I improve and just kind of my thoughts on it. If you guys, you know, find a lot of value in this episode, if you know this this brings you to start things knowing that it may not be perfect the first time, or that even if it isn't great after you do it, you can always turn it into a positive some way. So we're gonna get right into it. I'll let you guys play for a little bit and then I'll interject accordingly. What's up everybody? Welcome back to the Wealth Not Weight Podcast. I am your host as always, Joe Squeeza. And today we are talking, and it's just again me. Uh, no computer, no setup, no playing of audio or talking to my previous self. It's going to be a direct message about something that's very important to both me, the channel, and a lot of people out there. It's going to be personal finance, but specifically personal finance to a younger generation of people, people my age, maybe a little bit younger, a little bit older. It's people who are still trying to find their way in life and you know maybe just got out of college or going into college, leaving high school soon. Um, or banana college just for a little bit and still trying to find their way and what the fuck they're trying to do and getting everything all set up. So first pause, um, this was a great idea. I really liked the way to talk about it and I went in with this good idea on helping a younger generation. I have these very passionate, very strong thoughts and feelings um, of which I thought it applied to that specific topic I just talked about, personal finance, when really it was more of like a freedom thing, as you guys will see. I don't want to spoil it too much. And it's a lot of great stuff there for the first few minutes, but it doesn't necessarily connect to what I originally was going to talk about. That's okay if I would have changed originally what I was going to talk about. But then secondly, I don't think it could have formed a strong podcast episode. I think it could have been a little bit of a longer of a Wealth Not Weight episode. I don't think it would have been a strong podcast episode for it um, based on what I wanted to do. However, it's my show. I could, you know, do whatever I want with it. But I don't think that it was exactly what I was going for. So I'll give you guys a little bit of a taste of it. Um, Try and enjoy and see. I think there's a lot of great content and and stuff that I talked about here. Um, But it doesn't necessarily line up with the podcast. But you guys will see. So something that's very big or personal finance for young people And something I cannot stress enough is don't get bogged down and just kind of set yourself in something that's permanent. Especially right now, especially coming out of the pandemic, especially everything, you are in both a transitional period of your life. You're leaving high school, you're in high school, you're leaving college, you're going into college, you just got out of college, you're finding your first jobs, your career, all this wild crazy shit that's going to be setting up who you are fundamentally. You're such in a transitional period, figuring out who the fuck you are and what the fuck you want to do, along with the transitional period, not just for the country, but for the world. Things are just opening up again. People are able to go places. Everybody's experiencing this. They're finding this new normal. They're building, they're growing, and and things are going to be forever different. There's this big transitional period that's happening now and the next couple years for both you personally and the world itself, that can seem kind of scary for a lot of people, but it's not. It's a good thing. Change, as much as people don't need, you know, don't like it, it's needed. People need change. Change gets rid of the old and makes way for the new. If you use it as an opportunity, like I said before in the last podcast, change can be a wonderful thing. So don't get bogged down in the permanent. I remember I talked before on a podcast with me and Johnny, we talked about it. A friend of mine was like, oh my God, I'm graduating high school. I got to figure out this, got to figure out a college. I gotta figure... You don't have to sit there and have your whole life figured out. Most people don't. You just have to have a strong idea of what you like and a hope and understanding of what you want to do. If you don't, 
try everything. If you're young, try everything you can. Well, I got this and that. Don't get bogged down by the particulars. Okay, and that's also a big reason why that I'm not a big per a fan. So there, that was a really great kind of topic and uh, discussion that I had set up for it. It's extraordinarily important for young people to go out and experience freedom. I would never have learned the things that I love or change myself or pick these new hobbies like photography and stuff or even use that to make money or discover, you know, probably a YouTube channel or, or investing or really anything if I didn't actively go out and try things and try and find myself and discover new things and, and learn about myself. And I just kind of took this path. Everybody told me I wouldn't have done that. And then now also freedom is an extraordinarily important thing with me. Uh, it was then, but more so now than ever. And that's an extraordinarily important part and something I feel a lot of young people need to hear. Um, going on for it, what should I, I should have done is discussed how to set up your finances, uh, the basics, the importance. Um, I'll kind of talk about it, I know, a little bit later on in the video, but kind of adapting how it's important to that kind of mindset. Now I go more into financing, which is an important topic as well, and something uh, I, I don't like, as many of you know. Um, but overall, then it kind of divulges. I'd say partway through this, maybe the next section, I kind of lose the plot a little bit. And I'm talking about very you know important stuff and stuff that's very helpful, but it doesn't necessarily directly connect. And the financing things is just because now you have a car loan. Now you have, you know, a house payment that you have to make. If you could afford it, you could do all that, great. But God forbid you lose your job. God forbid there's a major health emergency. God forbid you just want to change or try something new. You can't. The amount of people I know that are bogged down because they bought a car, too much car that they didn't need, instead of going out and spending two grand on a car, you know, maybe sucking it up and walking or taking a bus or doing what they got to do for a year or two years or whatever, and then buying a used vehicle, something, say, like a GG type of thing, they went out and financed a ten to $15,000 car you don't need. If it takes you from point A to point B, great. If you have money, like I had some money to set aside and get my dream car, my Corvette, it still wasn't expensive by a lot of stretch of the imagination, then great, you could do that. But if you don't and you just need a vehicle, go buy something cheap. You don't need to finance a car. Because then guess what? Now if you hate your job and you want to leave and you can't find a job that pays you the most, like, I, like I, I know again, a lot of people who like that, they don't like their jobs where they're at. They're fucking stuck now because they have to pay five, six hundred dollars a month. Otherwise they come and take their car. That's just plain and simple how it is then. I can't leave this job that I would really like and I feel really enjoy pays $2 less an hour. I cannot pay for my car without that. And then you're stuck. And then if you're someone who uses credit, I'm not a big person who uses credit or finance or anything, but you're going to continue to do that and you feel that's important. So then when your credit score gets fucked up, you can't buy a house, this, that, and it's going to fuck you off for a long period of time because you made a permanent decision. Don't make super permanent decisions. Buy a car, $2,000 car, $500 car. It's main call it could be Bondo, okay? I have a couple people, there's like people who Dick Dave Ramsey talks about who's very, again, against financing. And something I learned a while against against financing. Originally, like I talked about, the original chapter in the book was going to be a, how to finance and use credit and do all that. But after really researching and studying it, the freedom that it provides without having to finance and do stuff like that is extraordinary. Again, we had Johnny on, we had other people we talked about, and people like, yeah, but you can make more money with financing this, that. I, I get that. You could put in whatever situation you want. You go, oh, I can make 10% more, I can make 20% more. I don't give a fuck about that. Plain and simple. As a young person, especially me, maybe you're different, but as a young person, I care about the freedom. I am free to leave the job that I did not enjoy and Uber and do stuff and follow my passion because I didn't put myself in a permanent responsibility. Yes, I have the luxury of being with my family still and doing stuff like that. But I know people who had that option, who put themselves in bad positions, went out and said, well, guess what? I'm, I don't know what I want to do, but I'm just going to pick a major and take out a student loan on it. I'm going to move away from my family and go to an state college and now I have to pay for rent and dorm and everything. And then I'm going to finance a car. Well, now I can't leave the, the, the school because I have all these student loans. I might as well get my degree at this point, even though I don't like the, the course I'm in. I can't afford to switch courses. Uh, I now have to stay at this job that I don't like because I have a car payment. And I, you know, I, have to, I pay for a house and I don't want to move back with my family. You put yourself in a stuck position. Don't do that. Don't make super permanent decisions. And, and realize that really nothing is super permanent unless it's death or like mortal injury. 
Anything else can be changed. It may have been taken a, a lot of work. Say you got to finance you know, a car payment or something, but you could pay it off or sell the car and get something cheaper. Same thing with houses. Student loans, well, it's a little tougher. You can still bust your ass and pay it down, but it's still possible. Don't get bogged down with particulars and enjoy the freedom because you're in a transitional period. You're changing jobs. You're changing careers. You're changing schooling. You're with the love of your life, and then six months later, you realize, it does, so guess what? You guys, you, know, you don't work out. It happens. You're young. It's the whole fucking point of life is figuring shit out. Nobody has this life thing figured out. Even these. So that was all really great content. I think it's extraordinarily important for a lot of young people to hear um, about building their finances and, and setting themselves up for freedom and setting themselves up for success throughout their lives, especially while they're during a transitional period. Um, I feel like, and I'll talk about it more, um, there's some, of course, stronger and better basics and topics. Well, maybe not necessarily better, but, but different and, and additional basics that will help them set up their finances for success. Those two, set, understanding that change occurs and setting yourself up to be free, along with not financing and putting yourself in a long-term obligation of which most of the time they don't understand something about is extraordinarily important financial detail. Um, and that's, you know, a really great and I, I think something really amazing and the best content I had in this episode. Um, but that could have been, you know, what, that's like five, ten minutes. That could have been a video clip. Now here comes the part where I try and connect the rest of that to the main idea um, of the podcast, which on its own is, is a great, great concept. But now trying to connect to this main idea and kind of trying to shoehorn him. It's not going to work very well, um, and I, I kind of lose the plot a little bit with it, uh, for the most part at least. And you guys will kind of see I start to struggle to say some stuff and figure it out, make the connections, and it goes a little more uh, tangenty than informative. But the the section we just passed was extremely informative. The rest, the rest may may be a little interesting. You know, billionaires and millionaires and people who are a lot older than you are retired don't have their life figure it out to the same degree you do. They don't know for, with certainty what's going to happen tomorrow. They don't know they're going to wake up tomorrow. Some people still have to figure out shit, you know, even especially as you build on and get through a higher level of life, uncertainty somewhat grows more and more. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I don't know if the people I love and care about are going to be alive. I don't know if oh, my job's going to be here or if it's going to get replaced with some form of automation or, or if I'm going to become redundant. There's no certainties in life. There's no permanence. Things change, especially at the age you're at, and enjoy the uncertainty and the transition. You have the freedom to do whatever the fuck you want. Now is the time to enjoy less responsibility. Yes, some people are stuck in situations where they have to have more responsibility than others. I get that. And you know, you got to take care of that and do what you got to do. I understand. But it's only going to get worse as you get older. Because if you're stuck in responsibilities now, if you have responsibilities and you set these up and you continue to pile them all on, there's no room for freedom. There's no room for transition. There's no room for to try things out and to be happy. You need to allow yourself the freedom. If you want to move to a different city, get everything set up, do what you got to do. Drop everything then and then move. Again, easier said than done, you know, maybe you got to save up for a little bit, maybe you got to do stuff, but your personal finances should be done smart. It should allow for the lifestyle you want to live. And of course, you know, you have to set up and, and live within your means and whatnot, and I understand that, and that's, again, something I practice very heavily. Don't live above your means, but if your lifestyle is freedom and adventure and you want to do stuff, incorporate that into your personal finances. That needs to be something that's set up. That's why then, okay, I can't finance things. Okay, I need to set myself up and make sure I pay down the things that I have to do. You know, I got a lot of student loans that are compounding and I kick my ass. I'm going to set my personal finances up so that for the next year or two years, it's going to kill that, destroy the student loan, and then I have the freedom to do what I need to do. You know, if I need to save up for a little bit, I could then, you know, do so and then move if I so desire. If I really don't like the job I'm at, I could then transition and go something a lot of people are doing right now. So again, pausing it, that was the last part of having your freedom and understanding who you are and setting up your lifestyle to coincide or your finances to coincide with the lifestyle that you want to live and maybe not having at that moment and building up. That is extraordinarily important and good information um, for anybody of any age. 
especially let alone somebody who's young and just starting their journey in life. Now, the parts before that, though, you don't know what's going on, this, that. Hey, it, it, it's, it's good stuff, and it applies to different topics, but it doesn't necessarily fit with what I'm trying to talk about. It doesn't, like that, I almost use that as a bridge, and the bridge just kind of collapsed. Like, it doesn't hold weight very well. The The topic and, and the information is good, but it doesn't connect well. That's like me talking about... Um, how a battleship was built, and then trying to talk about, well, okay, well, here's how cars drive on the road. Okay, it could be individually good information, but what you're trying to connect it to, the connection isn't strong. The connection isn't strong there. So I think that's also then when I start to kind of drop an interest for it. Um, you guys will see, I kind of like then later on, I just decided to end the video there. Um, I'll use the same outro for it, but it essentially was then, okay, 13 minutes, I talked about it, the last like five to six minutes wasn't really anything super good, I'm not really too thrilled with this episode, so then I went back, now this is the next section that you're about to see, is recording it and trying to talk more in depth about what to do with the finance, your finances and the basics, um, to varying degrees of success. It's important you have a strong understanding of who you are and what you want. That is probably one of the bigger priorities that you have to figure out. And then your personal finances should help you with that and build a basis. Being smart about it. Setting up a budget. Okay, here's how much I have, here's how much I save on for later, because then later on in life when you want to do something, maybe you're starting to save for retirement now, maybe if there's an emergency that comes up and have an emergency fund. But making the, the necessary steps that you need to now, the steps I built for myself years ago as a high schooler are paying off now Heavily, even though there's things I had to change and completely, you know, reset and re revamp and things I was doing even wrong that hurt me. The strong steps of learning a little bit about the stock market, understanding that I need to have money set aside, not blowing every penny I have. I spent a lot of money stupidly, but then eventually realizing, hey, I'm going to need a budget and do stuff. Even just a year or two year difference from when I started to where I am now is significantly better because I set a basis and a ground for myself. I understood that I want freedom. I under, you know, I didn't have a full grasp on who I was, but I understood that part of it enough that I was said, okay, I want the freedom to go figure out who the fuck I am. And I built my personal finances around that with a strong foundation. That is a perfect example. That's something that's very important, um, especially the first thing I said as part of that new clip is finding out who you are is an extraordinarily important thing, really for, for anything, really, for your weight loss, for your finances for discovering, you know, just what you want from life. Um, and that's an important step. That's not something I necessarily talked about in the beginning as far as a basis for, of the book, uh, as far as a basis of getting your finances together, but it's definitely something I cover in the book um, and definitely something I cover in really everything now because that's an important step I had to take. Um, then continuing on, though, and talking about the finances and setting up stuff, um, I get a little again more into the basics and finding out, you know, your income and stuff like that. The best solution for that would be I mean, I, I, it's stuff I talked about in other videos before, um, and then here I kind of scratched the surface on, I don't have any in-depth, real core meat and potatoes value information that kind of stresses on that. This may be the first video somebody sees, this may be the first video you're watching of me right now, and it kind of scratched the surface. Find out how much money you make and then find out how to budget. Okay, that's important stuff, but it's nothing that's really meat and potatoes. Um, and then it, it, it kind of, again, it's surface value for the stuff that I was trying to cover and the connection back to it. That's why I wasn't really super thrilled with that. Uh, and now the next section, I'm going to talk more about life stuff and move again away from the finances, which, and, and it's an important story and it, it means something. But again, this is supposed to be a personal finance thing. So having very little to do with personal finance or, or beyond a basis or beyond a skin value kind of thing, um, I don't feel is, is connecting to what I really wanted to in this video, at least initially. Okay, I got rid of all my liabilities. I got rid of the things I didn't have to do. I didn't take on new liabilities. I didn't do new stuff. You know, there are friends I know who, you know, are going through some tough times mentally, physically, and they're still young. And maybe, you know, instead of taking some time to work through their issues or going to see family out of state and doing the stuff that they need to do, they're stuck here and have to work because they have a car loan, because they have student loans. You know, when you're young and you're, you're in a very tough mental or physical position and you need to recover, you need to do that, otherwise it's going to harm you truly for the rest of your life, you should be free to do that. But if you lock yourself into a position where you can't, 
that's going to do more harm than good. Oh, well, at least I have a car now to get to do stuff. Okay, but then God forbid, you know, they didn't realize they were going to be put in the situation that they were put in. Now it's like, well, I can't go and spend time with family and rest and recuperate. I have to find a job and work it that pays me enough so I can pay off my car. I can't take the time that I need to, to, you know, work on my health because I have to pay for this car. I just, at that point, I would just fucking sell the thing personally. And that's what I recommend. But, you know, get rid of it. (laughs) Oh, I don't don't care at that point. But don't lock yourself into something and enjoy the freedom. Figure out who you are, build a strong basis, and set your personal finances up through that. I'm just kind of going to let this play a little bit because it's just me trying to figure out, I guess, what the fuck to say uh, for a little while. But again, and, and that's what I kind of talked about and something I reiterated. But again, I don't go beyond that. That is a strong theory. That's amazing. And I'm very glad I talked about that. And it's important for personal for young people to find out about personal finances. But I should have went more in depth with that. How do you set up a basis for being a young person? The first thing is to set up some form of budget for yourself. You have money coming in. You have to understand how much money do I make? Where's it all going? That's, that's one of the very first steps you have to set up. Um, pay down debt. That's also a very important step. Understand, here's how much money I make. Okay, I work usually X amount of hours. Here's what I got going on. What do I usually spend it on? More often times, it's not. It's going to be stupid shit. Or more often times than not, you don't make enough money to support a basic lifestyle. Figuring that out and having an understanding on that then is going to say, okay... I now know I need to make more money. I need to figure something out to make more money or I need to change the way my lifestyle is. Or, oh, hey, I do make enough money, but I need to stop spending money on stupid shit. And then you could set up some form of plan of attack. Okay, I know I need food, I need shelter, you know, I need to pay for gas, whatever the basics are to, you know, get to a job, get to school, whatever you gotta do. Make sure you have that sound first. Because if you can't eat, you can't live, can't get to work and, you know, get to school or learn or pay for your education or whatever it is that you need to do, that's like your main priority. That's not going to be very helpful for you. And then you also have to attack your debt. If you have student loans, if you have car payments, if you have, you know, house payments, if you're young and you took out a mortgage, you know, a lot of people are doing it. Some people can afford to do that. Some people don't. They do it anyway. Again, don't get locked into long-term personal issues. Um, you can then figure out a plan to attack that debt. You could then set up and say, okay, I know how much money I make. I know what I have to do. I have X amount of debt. Here's how much it costs for my basics. Here is everything else that, you know, is excluded from the basics, but I usually spend money, say, going to the movies or this or that or Netflix or whatever it is, you know, whatever the non-essential stuff is. What can I cut? What can I set up? How can I set this up to attack this debt as best as possible? Is I need to cancel my Netflix subscription for six months. You know, okay, maybe that extra, you know, 30 bucks a month will help me out. Is it that, you know, I don't need to go to the movies as often. So get a little bit more into the meat and potatoes of it here. Uh, we're eliminating debt and setting up a budget. Um, finding out, and, and I think it was something I said like $30 for Netflix, but it's, it's not. It's like 10 bucks a month. Um, but those little things do add up, and you're not going to become a billionaire by you know, not buying Starbucks, but you can um, start investing. You can use that money towards saving saving up. You can use that money to make extra payments. Um, you say you spend $5 a day on like a Starbucks or something, um, and you save that. Over the course of a year, you're almost at $1,900. So do you want a morning coffee from Starbucks or do you want an extra nineteen hundred dollars? That can make a significant dent if you have something like a car payment. If your car payment, like the average ones, are right around five hundred dollars a month, that's an extra three months of your car payment. If you're paying, you know, rent and your average rent's around twelve hundred dollars a month, that's an extra month, like month and a half worth of rent that you're using for coffee, you know, for gas, for everything. You could use that money then, say, so you don't have a car, you could save up and use that to put a uh, towards half of a car towards, you know, maybe all of a car if you can find a car cheap enough. Um, but you could use that towards a lot, or if you invest that, then over the course of, you know, say a 20 now, over the course between you now and 65, it will make you a million dollars, you know, annually compounding 10% a year. Uh, but that's, that's kind of the, the important factor of it, and that's kind of the meat and potatoes that I should have talked about more and then gone more in depth with it instead of now kind of sectioning off again. Again, this was a good video, and I feel this uh, could have been set up and made a good Wealth Not Weight episode, but I don't feel it was a very strong podcast episode.
You know, I spend $16 every two weeks. Finding little ways to improve. Maybe, okay, I, I need to eat out less. Maybe when I go to the grocery store, you know, I spend an extra $20, $30 that I don't need to spend. And instead I could get this. Maybe I need to get the store-bought brand instead of the extra thing and I save 15 bucks a month. I save $15 a week. That all then adds up to attack, you know, the, your, the debt and the issues that you have, the long-term issues that will affect you not only as this young transitional period, but then later on in life. You can attack that greater. Get rid of that and you remove that liability. Once you remove those liabilities, or if, if it's a car payment or something like that, figure out, okay, well, how much is it worth? How much do I pay off? Maybe my best option is just to sell it and put some money into a cheap beater card. You know, it's a little tougher now, obviously, because the computer shortages and stuff and car prices are higher. But figuring out some form of plan of attack. Maybe you need to get rid of that and you're in a college town and you get one of those little fucking scooter things. Maybe it's just, hey, I need to take a bus. Maybe that's what I need. If, if you live on your own, do you need to live on your own? Can you live with a roommate? Let me find a roommate. Let me move in with a roommate. Do I have friends I can move, move in with? You know, it's sometimes tough to live with friends and whatnot, but if you find friends that you're good with and you guys work together and, and can live, you know, happily and understandably, can you live with them and then not have to pay as much money as rent? Can you move back with your parents? I know someone who they moved out with a, a significant other and a friend of theirs, and then eventually they end up moving back in with their parents because it's like, this is a ridiculous amount of money now that they broke up or this or that, or then even people who moved in with friends and they said, hey, it's still a lot of money and I want to be able to go to do something else or I want to be able to have some extra freedom now. I'm going to then move back in with my parents. Don't be afraid to take a step back if it means you're going to take a step forward. If you have no idea what you want to do in life or you have this grand ambition of like, you know what, I'm tired of living here. Say you live in Ohio and you want to move to New York and you want to save up a little bit of money. You move back in with your family for six months to a year, save up that money. You know, maybe you pay them a little rent, however you work it out, and then take the money you saved, and then you have a basis for when you move. Understand what is it that I enjoy and what is it that I don't enjoy. That's going to help your finances significantly as well. Do I enjoy trying new things? Do I enjoy traveling? Do I enjoy this? You know, it's, you may have to save up money and budget really, really hard to do the things that you love, especially when you're young and you're not making as much money. Is what you're doing right now as far as a job, is what you're doing right now as far as school, something that you can see yourself doing long term? Are you on the fence about it? Are you locked into it? Even worse. You're going to have to figure that out. You know, that's not something I could do for you, unfortunately, but you're going to have to figure that out. Set up an emergency fund. That's always something I recommend, especially for young folks then too. Really anybody. Have six months or through your expenses set aside, God forbid you lose your job. God forbid something happens. God forbid there's an emergency or some form of health issue or something, and you have a serious issue. You then have a little bit of cushion. It also then prevents things from like the victim tax. Oh, hey, fuck, my car doesn't work. I'm stranded in the middle of nowhere, going home for the holidays. I have zero cash on me. I'm now worried, I'm now upset, I have you know, no way of paying for this, I have no idea what the fuck's going on, I don't know anything about cars, and you get no- And then there, um, when I talked about the emergency fund, I think the emergency fund's extremely important, but I should've went more into it. That's my phone, thank you. Uh, I should've went more into it, I should've talked about it more. Um, and then I kind of lost the plot where I was going, and I think I had a really good story set up for, you don't want to have the victim tax set up, that's something I talked about in the book, I talked about in a lot of things. Um, you want to be stuck in a situation where you don't know what's going on, you can't shop around, and you're just like, well, I need my car fixed, I'm in the middle of nowhere, I might as well pay this guy, instead of saying, hey, you know what, I have some money set aside, I can figure out a way to get around, if, if other than this, if I had to, let me shop around and find out, and you may find out that you're being taken advantage of, well, you may not, you, you may be like, okay, this is a good deal still, but again, I kind of lost the plot, and that was towards the end of that, um, and I should have dug in depth a little bit more and talked about that, but that was around the time that I was saying, oh, okay, um, I don't want to do this episode. I don't want to set this up. I don't, I'm very disheartened with the way it went. I'm very disheartened with the way it goes. Uh, I just want to be done. Maybe I'm going to scrap the whole thing. So there's about 20 minutes of content here. I was just going to scrap, but I said, you know what? No, I think there's some, definitely some good gems some definitely some good stuff I could talk about. And then I could use this as an example of saying, Hey, look, um, even though this, there's, there's, uh, things that I, I thought were going to go better for it. And I thought, you know, even after somebody like me who makes content because pretty consistently um, and has done quite a lot of it, you're still not going to 
go out of things fully flushed. Everything's not going to be perfect. Your first shot's not going to be the best thing you do. Maybe you have to do it again. But just starting and going for it is the important key. I just did this episode. I had a strong idea. You know what? It fell apart. Um, there's things I learned. Well, maybe I could be a little more prepared with this. Maybe I could have said the topic was different and then talked about more of the freedom aspect of it. Um, I could have had a better understanding. Maybe I could have planned an interview for this one instead of doing this and circumvented this completely. Um, like I like to do in the future because I feel the interviews bring a lot of value to people. Um, but something like that, I feel it, getting started and uh, and learning from this failure, I feel is, is very important. Um, and something that I feel a lot of people should understand is that things are going to come out fully formed. So you shouldn't be afraid to start. You shouldn't be afraid to go for it. Okay, Even if you are a seasoned pro, if you're someone who's done stuff like this before um, and have a strong understanding of it, things can go wrong, but the always view it as an opportunity. Then after that fact, like now I knew I had a lot of great stuff and I used that great stuff and I talked about it. And as I, I looked at this video, this video wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. I thought it was completely unusable. Everything was horrible. Oh my God. But I, I know there's a lot of little pearls and these a lot of little gems and some stuff, especially when I talk about the freedom and finding yourself and, and enjoying that kind of youth aspect and the things that youth brings. And then setting up a basis and using this to learn for stuff that was going to set you up later on in life um, and being happy in general. I feel that's very important stuff that I talked about here, but that wasn't the topic of the episode. That's very important stuff. And now I understand that I could have circumvented and, and connected it and maybe done something a little different. Um, but then I also used those gems to turn this into, say, hey, I had some really great content here and I do a commentary on it. I had some really great content here, some really important stuff that everybody should know. However... There's other stuff here that I feel wouldn't make a full-fledged episode, especially for a podcast. So I hope you guys like this kind of format. I'm going to play the outro for it. Um, this is just kind of interesting commentating uh, and, and again, kind of discussing those little pearls or wisdom. Um, it always comes back to me having a conversation with myself one way or another. Um, but I hope you guys like this episode of the podcast. Let me know what you think and let me know what are some improvements that you've made on things that you thought weren't uh, good. How did you, looking at something as an opportunity, um, become then, turn a problem into some form of a solution. If you guys like this episode, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you all next time. Peace. An emotional state. Let me know what you guys think of this video. I hope you liked it. Um, and that's how you set up your personal finances as a young person to allow yourself your freedom to figure out who you are and build the strong basis, you know, through budgeting, through investing and all that. Having that strong basis set up an emergency fund, that then having a strong basis will allow you to find your personal freedom and figure out who you are especially at such a traditional important time in your life. Hope you guys like this video. Uh, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you all next time.